Hey friends, welcome to day two of our multiplication and division review for fractions. Remember that you have to complete three problem sets this week in order to be eligible to retake your topic 11 test. This problem came from your topic 11 test, so pay close attention as I review it. Marcy built a scale model of the tallest building in town with an antenna on top. The model stands six and two thirds centimeters tall. The main building is three fourths of the height of the building, including the antenna. How tall is the antenna in the model? Now this is a tricky question that was made even trickier by the fact that I think there's a typo or something in the test because this number doesn't appear at least on my end. I don't know if you guys could see it when you were taking the test but I knew that the height of the entire model was six and two thirds centimeters because it's labeled on the drawing that way. So since the whole thing is six and two thirds centimeters and the main building is three fourths of that, I know that I need to calculate three fourths of six and two thirds. Whenever I see that magic word of, it makes me think that I'm going to be multiplying these fractions together. So I'm going to multiply the fractions in order to calculate just the height of the antenna, which you can see here in blue. Three fourths times six and two thirds. So I'm going to need to convert six and two thirds to an improper fraction. The fastest and most efficient way to do that is to multiply your denominator times your whole number amount, 6 times 3, then add your numerator. So 6 times 3 equals 18, and 18 plus 2 more, that's my numerator, gives me 20. So 16 and 2 thirds is equivalent to 20 thirds. Now I simply need to multiply my numerators, multiply my denominators, and then simplify. 3 times 20 equals 60, and 4 times 3 equals 12. 60 divided by 12 equals 5. So the height of the antenna is D, 5 centimeters. Remember that in order to get full credit for this work, you do need to upload written work. So it's not going to be enough simply to bubble in choice D. I want to see the written work along with it. Let's look at the next question. A family is remodeling their apartment. They decide to increase the width of their living room to one and one fifth of its original size. Again, whenever you see that magic word of, it's going to make you think that you need to multiply these fractions or the mixed numbers. If the original width of the living room is 20 feet, then what will the new width be? So the original living room was 20 feet wide and they're going to expand it or make it bigger. It's going to be one and one fifth of its original size. So I'm going to multiply one and one fifth times 20. So I'm just gonna put 20 with a denominator of one that doesn't change the value of that whole number. And in order to convert one and one fifth to an improper fraction, I'm going to multiply the denominator times my whole number amount, then add my numerator. So that will be five times one, whoops, typo. Five times one equals five plus one more equals six. So one and one fifth is equivalent to six fifths. I'm gonna multiply that times 20 over one. Remember this little dot means the same thing as multiplication. When you're multiplying fractions, you just have to multiply straight across your numerators and straight across your denominators and then simplify. Six times 20 
Well, I know that six times two is 12, and then I can just add a zero, because I have one zero here. Six times 20 is 120, and five times one is five. Now I need to simplify. How many times does five go into 120? Well, five goes into 12 two times. Two times five is 10. Subtract. 12 minus 10 is two. Bring down the zero. How many times does five go into 20? Four times. Four times five is 20, so I have no remainder. I always love the problems with no remainder. 120 divided by five equals 24. So that means that the new living room is going to be 24 feet wide. One serving of cottage cheese has a mass of 110 grams. Two out of 55 of the mass, or two 50 fifths, of the mass consists of carbohydrates. What is the total mass of carbohydrates in two servings of cottage cheese? Okay, so this is a problem where we kind of need to like translate it into everyday language. Carbohydrates, you guys probably have heard a lot about carbohydrates in your young lives, especially if you have grown-ups who are counting carbs or trying to eat healthier. So carbohydrates are a type of sugar, and it tells us that one serving of cottage cheese has a mass of 110 grams. So if you put a dollop of cottage cheese onto a plate and weighed it, it would be 110 grams without the plate. That's the mass. And of that cottage cheese... Two out of every 55 grams is carbs. So they want to know what's the total mass of carbohydrates in two servings of cottage cheese. So I can use a tape diagram to represent this. And I can say, here's my 110 grams. I can divide it into... two servings of 55 grams, and of those 55 grams, two grams are carbs. Two grams of carbs. And over here, in this serving of 55 grams, it's the same. I've got two grams of carbs in this serving. So that's a total of four grams of carbs in one serving. This is saying, what's the total mass of carbohydrates in two servings? Whoops, I almost fell for a trick there. So now I'm going to need to say, okay, if I this is one serving. If I have another serving of 110 grams, that's another four grams of carbs. So that would be a total of eight grams. Another way to solve this would be to use multiplication. So you can say two out of 55 times two servings, that would be 220 grams over one. Multiply across your numerators. So two times 220 would give us 440. Multiply across your denominators. 55 times 1 is 55, and then divide. Now, if I'm going to divide 440 whew, by 55, I'm curious. I hope it will come out evenly since my first one came out evenly. Yes, okay, good. I would say for a division problem like this, I'd probably use partial quotients. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Um, and I'm not going to go through this whole process because the lesson is not really about division. It's about 
multiplying fractions, but the answer is eight, eight grams. Okay, everyone, let's take a look at this tricky question. Brett asked George and Danielle to help him hang up 30 posters for a school dance. He gave one fifth of his posters to George and he gave one third of the remaining posters to Danielle. Then Brett hung up the remaining posters. How many posters did he hang? Okay, now let me tell you where I got stuck in doing this. He gave one fifth of his 30 posters to George. And he gave one third of the remaining posters meaning the ones that were left over to Danielle. This got me tripped up. That means that we need to calculate one fifth of his 30 posters and then remove that number of posters before we calculate one third. So let's work on that. One fifth of 30. That would be like saying, I'm going to take 30 posters, divide them into five groups, and there will be eight, six posters in each group. So one fifth of 30 is six posters. Now, he gave one third of the remaining posters to Danielle. So that means that he gave one third of 24 posters to Danielle. Where did I get 24, you ask? I subtracted the six posters that he gave to George from the 30 posters that he started with, and that gave me 24. So one third of 24 is eight, because eight divided into three equal groups gives me, um, sorry, 24 divided into three equal groups gives me eight posters in each group. Okay, then he hung up the remaining posters. So let's see, he started with 30 posters and he gave George six of them. That left him with 24 posters. Then he gave eight posters to Danielle so 24 minus 8 equals 16, and that is answer choice C. That was a really, really, really hard question. I struggled with that one a lot. Okay, for snacks, Mrs. Taylor distributes 10 pounds of grapes evenly amongst her 25 students. How many pounds of grapes does each student receive? So imagine a, a big classroom full of 25 kids. Now I am a big fan of sketching out problems to help me solve them. And it doesn't mean you have to spend a whole bunch of time drawing an elaborate picture, but I do think it's worth taking a few seconds to sketch it out. So here's her 25 kids. Okay, and she has 10 pounds of grapes to share. If she passes out her 10 pounds of grapes amongst these 25 kids, is everybody going to have more or less than one whole pound of grapes? I imagine the teacher pushing like a big heavy wheelbarrow of grapes in. I mean, maybe not a wheelbarrow for 10 pounds, I don't know. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to picture it on my mind. 10 pounds, 25 kids, 10 pounds of grapes. Everyone's going to have, whoa, I have my numbers reversed. Did you see my mistake? 10 pounds of grapes divided by 25 kids gives us less than one pound per child. So we can eliminate choice C right away. 
we can also eliminate choice D. We're choosing between A and B because those are the only two answer choices that are less than one pound. So we're gonna do 10 divided by 25. Now you can write this in fraction form. 10 divided by 25, then reduce or simplify. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. 2 fifths is equivalent to which of these two amounts? Is it equivalent to 4 tenths, or is it equivalent to 5 tenths? Well, 5 tenths is 1 half, so it can't be that. It's got to be choice A, 4 tenths. A recipe calls for 5 pounds of flour to make 8 loaves of bread. How much flour is needed to make 1 loaf? So imagine a big Rubbermaid container of flour. 5 pounds. Is required. If you have five pounds of flour, you can make eight loaves of bread. This is my best attempt to draw a loaf of bread. What do you think about that? Okay, so five pounds of flour will give you eight loaves of bread. They want to know how much flour is required to just make one loaf of bread. So we're going to take our five pounds of flour and share it out equally among our eight bread loaves. Five divided by eight, I can write that in fraction form, five eighths, and that matches choice A. Okay friends, that brings us to the end of set two. So remember to upload your written work and get excited for set three coming tomorrow.